The first of the op-amp configurations that we're going to consider is known as the non-inverting amplifier. It gets its name from the fact that the source voltage that's to be amplified is connected to the non-inverting terminal. Because of that, it turns out that the output voltage will be of the same sign, S-I-G-N, as the input voltage. So for example, if V sub S is a positive voltage, the output voltage will also be positive. On the other hand, if the input voltage is negative, then the output voltage will be negative also. The sign is not inverted. Now I have here two different schematics. I would, I would encourage you to stop the video for just a second and convince yourself that these two schematics are identical as far as function is concerned. The things that you're going to be looking at are that the V sub S is connected to the non-inverting terminal. Of course, the non-inverting terminal is the one that's got the positive sign on it. So when this one is connected to the non-inverting, over here V sub S is also connected to the non-inverting. So this amplifier over here is upside down from this op amp here. The other thing that you look at is where does the feedback go? And we'll talk more about feedback later, but suffice it for now to say that feedback is the process or the act of taking the voltage at the output and running it back to, in this case, the negative or the inverting terminal. Again, we'll talk more about it feedback later, but this is referred to as negative feedback. And you can remember that because the feedback loop comes back to the, ne the terminal of the negative sign, which is the inverting sign. So in both of these feedback circuits, we're going from V out through R1. The node be between R1 and R2 is then tapped and brought back to the inverting terminal. Notice over here we have the same situation. Coming from the output, going through R1, connecting to R2, and the node that where R1 and R2 are connected come in, uh, is connected then to the inverting terminal and then brought back to ground. Now let's analyze these op amps, uh, both of these circuits, and see what it is that, or why we might draw it this way under certain circumstances and why we might draw it this way under other circumstances. Now let's start here with the one on the right. By drawing it in this configuration, it makes it obvious that the output voltage goes through a voltage divider circuit and only a portion of the output voltage is fed back to the inverting terminal. In this case here, V sub n then, using our voltage divider formula, V sub n is equal to the voltage across R2, which is V out times R2 over R1 plus R2. Now in order to get V out as a function of V, our input, we're going to reverse the roles here, multiply both sides by the inverse of this and solving or solving for V out, we get then that V out is equal to Vn times R1 plus R2 over R2. Now we don't want it as a function of Vn, we want to know what the output is as a function of the input voltage V sub S. We now apply one of our ideal op amp approximations that was the one that we referred to as the virtual short, that V sub P and V sub N are going to be so close to each other that the difference V P minus V N is zero, or what we can say then is that V sub N is approximately equal to V sub P. Now, what is V sub P? Using another op-amp approximation that the current going into the input terminals is zero, Therefore, I sub P is zero. There will be no voltage drop across V sub S because the current going through it is zero. So V sub P is, in fact, just our source voltage, V sub S. So V sub P equals V sub S. V sub N equals V sub P due to the virtual short. And we have then that V out, again, replacing V sub N with V S. V out is equal to V sub S times R1 plus R2 over R2. And generally speaking, we'll take this and say, well, note that R2 is a denominator that's common to both of those two terms. So we can then have V out is equal to V sub S times R2 over R2, that's 1, plus R1 over R2. We say that the gain, G, the closed loop gain, the gain that we get because of this feedback circuit is equal to 
1 plus R1 plus R2. We can we refer to that as the gain of the non-inverting amplifier. We'll see when we get to the inverting amplifier configuration that its gain is just slightly different than this. But let's just point out now that V out is in fact going to be the same sign as V sub S. R1 and R2 are both positive quantities, so positive the, the ratio of positive quantities is positive, plus 1 is a positive number, times whatever the sign is on V sub S gives us a V out that is the same sign as V sub S. Now, let's look at this circuit over here. And to analyze this, we're going to use a technique, use a node analysis, which is a, an analysis technique that we'll frequently use on, on op-amp circuits, especially as the op-amp circuit gets to be a little bit more complex. So here's the deal. This is now V sub n. We're going to write a node equation at V sub n. But first, we're going to note that this voltage here, V sub p, is going to equal our source voltage. As we saw over here, the R sub s had no influence on it, and so I've left that out of this circuit here. So V sub p equals V sub s. V sub n equals V sub p because of the virtual short. So V sub n then is going to equal V sub s. Now, let's write a node equation summing the currents leaving this node. The currents leaving this the current leaving this node going through R2 to ground is V sub S minus zero divided by R2 plus the current going from this node in this direction is going to be the voltage across R1, which is V sub S minus V out. divided by R1, and then plus the current going into, or leaving this node and going into the op-amp. But our ideal op-amp approximation tells us that the current going into the input terminal is zero, so we could write a plus zero there. But let's leave that off and simply say that the sum of those two currents must equal zero. So what that's saying is that, in fact, just as we saw over here, the current is going from the output through these two resistors back. It's going through the, from the output through these two resistors to ground. These two resistors are in series because the current going in here is zero. Now, let's solve this equation for V out in terms of V sub S. We have V sub S, factoring out V sub S, times 1 over R2 plus 1 over R1 minus V out over R1 is equal to 0. Now bringing this term over to the other side and solving for V0, we get then that V0 is equal to V sub S times R1 times 1 over R2 plus 1 over R1, or distributing that through the R1 over the R1 gives you the 1, the R1 over the R2 gives you the other term, and we get the V out is equal to V sub S times 1 plus R1 over R2. So the gain terms are the same. Uh, these two circuits are equivalent, and uh, that gives you an idea of what the non-inverting amplifier does.